Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And today we're in Genesis 9 and 10, and we're talking about Noah's dysfunctional family. Hey, have you ever had an awkward conversation? I mean, if you had, you know it's awkward. Uh, well, today, as I mentioned, we're talking about Noah's family and, and its extreme dysfunction. Now, Think about the success of Noah. I mean, he is faithful to God. He's the builder of the ark. He's really the father of modern humanity, he and his family. And, and so, you know, here's this great man of God who has seen miracles happen, who survived the calamity that was worldwide. And, and then what does he do? When everything is good, he gets drunk and passes out. He gets drunk and passes out. I mean, that's the story. And, and we see his flaw there, his dysfunction. And then his son Ham is one of his three boys, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Ham uncovers or sees his father's nakedness. Uh, now, we have absolutely no idea what that phrase means. And if somebody tells you they know what it means, they don't. Some people think it means sexual assault. Some people think it means just simply shame and dishonor. But in any case, he showed disrespect to his dad by telling his brothers, probably mocking his father. And his brothers went in and covered up their father's nakedness. And all we know is that when Noah woke up, he cursed his son Ham. Placed a curse on him and his descendants. And by the way, this, uh, this passage is one of the key passages that it was used 150, 200 years ago to defend slavery in the United States of America. It was used by preachers and theologians to say they deserve slavery, they're the descendants of Ham, which there's no uh, actual uh, you know, DNA record that would connect them in any way, shape, or form. So uh, that, you know, that just wasn't the case, but it was, used, it was misused that way, and uh, you just need to know that. So what does it reveal uh, uh, to us? What do we need to learn from this weird story, this awkward conversation. Well, I think it does reveal the effects of sin on families. Okay, dysfunction uh, has a generational consequences. Noah's dysfunction impacted his sons. Uh, Ham's dishonor, disrespect of his dad impacted his descendants. So our actions have generational consequences. Uh, and, and that's why we encourage you to get healthy. That's why we encourage you to overcome your destructive habits and, and, and self-destructive routines and addictions so that you can break that cycle of destruction that is passed down from father to son to son to son to son, from generation to generation to generation. By the way, that's why we offer things like Celebrate Recovery. Monday nights, 6.30, Sweetwater Campus, be there because it can help you overcome that destructive cycle. Somebody in the chain has to break it. Somebody has to say, I'm not going to pass this on to my kids. And, and when you do that, it's a beautiful thing because when you embrace obedience, blessings flow. They flow to you, they flow to your kids, your grandkids, and on down the line as long as people choose to follow Jesus. And if you do that, one of the great things is you have a whole lot less awkward conversations. I hope this helps. God bless you, Calvary. Have a great day.